All right, thank you so much. Here, the program still this morning on ITV. It is the fifth day of January 2022, and uh, such a time to begin to look inward as an individual, perhaps as a group of persons, as a corporate entity, or even as a nation. Now, if you listen to uh, the broadcast that uh, was made by uh, some governors uh, in the state, in the country, and perhaps uh, some other uh, aspects of uh, the 2022 appropriation bill that uh, was uh, passed uh, into law by the president. Now, he actually made a concern for uh, investment opportunities in the country. And of course, that's going to be our focal point this morning on the program this morning on ITV. It's a brand new year. Once again, we say happy, happy new year and a prosperous one. Well, the year can only be prosperous for you if you begin to look inward and see uh, the opportunities that abound around you. Now, Nigeria is known to uh, be a nation uh, that is, uh, you know, dependent on foreign uh, goods, foreign products and uh, even foreign services. What are the issues? What is largely responsible for all this? Can Nigeria as a nation continue like this? Can we as a people continue like this? And if we do, uh, to what extent is it going to get us into uh, or get us to? These are some of the things that uh, we're going to be talking about this morning as uh, we look at investment opportunities in Nigeria. And uh, to discuss all this uh, this morning, we are so privileged to have uh, uh, Mr. Henry A. Mohai. Uh, who is uh, the MD, CEO of Adima Foods and Beverages, uh, Limited Producers of Adima Table Water. So you welcome to this program this morning on ITV. It's my pleasure. All right. And also we have Big Brother friend, Dike Matthew Ahirobo, Ambassador, as a matter of fact, Ambassador of Nigeria Economic Sustainability Plan, uh, representing South South. Uh, these two gentlemen are CEOs in their own right and uh, of course are uh, entrepreneurs. Well, I don't want to describe them as small scale uh, entrepreneurs anymore. I think they've grown uh, beyond that. Gentlemen, uh, thank you much you. Welcome to this program. Good morning, Mr. Evans. Good uh, morning, Ado State. Good morning, Nigeria. All right. Now, uh, let me start with uh, Mr. Henry, uh, you know, Aaron Mukai. Now, looking at uh, Nigeria as a nation, just like what I said, that uh, uh, Nigeria is one great country that uh, the economy is so large. As a matter of fact, uh, it's uh, run next to Egypt, uh, you know, and even some other great nations of the world. And uh, Nigeria is known to be a great dependence on uh, foreign goods and services. Now, little do we know that we have so much uh, investment opportunities here. And uh, that's uh, where people like us give you guys kudos that have uh, taken the risks to invest and see how they can actually uh, invest for uh, the larger uh, population. Now, how would you want to describe uh, investment opportunities in Nigeria? Uh, once again, good morning, viewers. Happy New Year. I praise that this year will be better for us than uh, the year that has just gone past. Investment opportunities abound. But what we lack here is the encouragement, the enabling business environment that we need government to create for business to strive. That is what is lacking. Uh, with a population of, uh, we call it estimated population of 200 million, then we have the market is there. But the challenge is that we don't have uh, the ease of doing business. That is our greatest challenge. Mm. There is nothing we, Nigerians, we are creative. We have the business acumen. But the problem we have, we don't have the enabling environment for you to have uh, to invest and have good return on investment. That's our greatest challenge. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Henry uh, uh, Hirobo, when we talk about the enabling environment, who creates the enabling environment? What exactly are we talking about? Is it that the people are not encouraging? or the government of the day uh, does not encourage, uh, does not encourage would-be manufacturers? Uh, talking about enabling environment, uh, it is the responsibility of the government to provide uh, a security for lives and property for people to be able to do business. Now, talking about investment opportunity in Nigeria, first of all, I'd like us to look at the term investment, you know, and the uh, opinion leader, Amelia Webster, has uh, epistemized that the term investment from the root word invest, that is to be quit with power, to endow, talking about endowment, 
Now, we're talking about investment opportunity in Nigeria. Talking about what are you endowed with? Now, my brother have just said that uh, there's not an enabling environment for people to do business. There are a lot of resources around, uh, both natural resources, uh, human capital, but carrying out this uh, endowment, putting them into work, to production process, is the challenge. And now you talk about uh, insecurity, you talk about uh, uh, shortage in power supply. These are uh, restraints, you know, bringing about threat at the long run for people who do business to run into loss. And uh, thereby, you know, you see business that have been doing well, at the end of the day, they begin to fold up. So we are looking at uh, uh, investment opportunity from the credo this time, you know, to be entrenched in the educational system for people, you know, from the primary school to the secondary school, you know, to be introduced to the basic technology and, you know, to the skill acquisition process for people to be endowed so that even with the challenges that are banned, you'll be able to mitigate them at the long run. Okay, so what you're saying is that it appears that uh, people don't get enough knowledge uh, before they can venture into investment that opportunities. That is primary. Without the right information, you will not know how to synergize, put all these resources together, talking about the four factors of production, you know, into production process to have an end product. You talked when you were introducing that uh, Nigeria is dependent on uh, 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 foreign goods yeah. just because we are not producing. If we take it to produce what we use and use what we produce, at the end of the day, we will not have a balance of payment deficit in our national income accounting. We will not uh, 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 be dependent, you know, having a worsening economy at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So this is what we need to to do, to get the right information in our education system so that we will not just be certificate driven, but we will be skill driven, you know, producing what we use to, to be a, a, a certified of the skill that you are empowered with. Mm. Yeah, in the, t in the training system. That okay. is it. All right, now, uh, Mr. Henry, now, if you look at uh, uh, opportunities, uh, investment opportunities one more time in Nigeria, uh, there are various sectors that uh, people can actually invest in. You have the agricultural sector, the real estate sector, uh, the oil and gas mining sector, the manufacturing uh, industry, which you uh, uh, fit into, and of course, uh, the King Matthew here ago. And uh, you also have uh, the federal government savings uh, bond, stock fixed deposit, uh, tech, transportation, and haulage services that has to do with logistics and so on and so forth. Now, uh, from what uh, Matthew Herbo said, uh, it appears that people don't get the right uh, education, the right information, uh, so as to know uh, what aspects of the economy they can really put their time and efforts into. In other words, so as to know uh, what aspect, which aspect of the, of the economy they can invest in. Now, I remember we still have the 6334 system of education. <laughs> we, if we have that uh, kind of system of education in place and we still claim that people don't have the right information, the right education, what is wrong? One thing is to have the policy. Another thing is to work the policies through. The 6334 system, what was it hard to achieve? In the GSS class, was a class that was meant for students to acquire skill. But today, go to education system. Are they taught acquisition of skill in that, in that level of the academic? Pursuit? No. All we are still doing, we are just in doing theoretical things, leaving out the practical aspect of it. Then you talked about the agriculture. You and I know what we are presently faced with in this country. We have large arable land that are not tapped. It's not as though the men are not there to tap the land. But the problem we are facing now is insecurity, banditry, kidnapping, raping, because of this, people are scared to go to farm. Then you come to other sectors. Most problem people have, they have the fund, they have the resources, but they may not channel it in the proper industry or the proper aspect. Mm. I tell people that somebody else is thriving in the business doesn't mean that you will do well there. Okay. There are things we need to do that most of us don't do. When you tell them, if you want to get something done rightly, be ready to pay some price. It costs a little bit. 
you need to do feasibility study in whatever field, in whatever area you want to invest in. You need to know, understand the terrain. How does it work there? You don't know what the other person has put in that is making you see him going the way he's going. But the feasibility study will explain to you the details, the nitty gritty, things you are likely going to face in this industry, in this business you want to venture it, venture into. So if those things are not articulated, you will put in all the money there and you may not come out well. Okay. Now, when, 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 when we say feasibility study, because yes. uh, what uh, probably has been discovered is that a lot of people uh, don't know the difference between uh, really getting the feasibility study of what you are venturing into. For some people, they, they think that, okay, feasibility study just is just the money. foundation knowledge. Uh, take, for example, I want to go into... Uh, your own sector, the manufacturing sector, making table water for people to drink and all that. A lot of people probably think that, okay, it's just for me to have the basic knowledge of how to make table water and all that. So when you say feasibility study, what exactly do you mean? Okay, in feasibility study, we tell you the terrain, this industry, how does it work? It will tell you, prepare your mind, that if you invest XYZ, there's gestation period that between this period and this period, you are not going to, this is what you are expected to, to experience. Then two, it will tell you the future of this business, how far you can go with this business. And it tells you about the patience you need to have for you to go in this business. The feasibility will explain every detail to you, how the business, that industry, mm. how it operates. But some people feel, maybe if I just come to you, just explain to me how does this business work. And I just, maybe the ones I can remember, I just explained to you, you think that is sufficient. It's not sufficient, that is half knowledge. Mm. That is half knowledge. Mm. But in the feasibility, it will tell you the pros and the cons. It will tell you what to expect per time, per time. It will tell you the caliber of staff you need to engage for you to get the end result, for you to have good return on your investment. It's the feasibility study that will explain all these things to you. They're still talking about investment opportunities that are bounced here. Mm. Then there are other areas that are a big challenge. For example, in this our manufacturing industry, all of us know. As I, as I drove into this uh, your premises just now, your, the, your studio went off. Mm. I heard they were calling on the generator man to come and put on the generator. The, the so, studio did not go off. We had little challenge. Anyway, that's... Yes, well, I was there when they put on the generator. Mm, yeah. The power supply, the public supply went off. Mm. Then you had to go on your alternative, alternative power. Yeah. Or power. Mm. Right. So what we are seeing, in effect, is that if power is not stable, there is no way you can make good progress in the industry. Okay. That's where the industry we are in now. Okay. All right. Let me pause you. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Here, Bo. Yes. You also you are into the manufacturing business, and uh, you make... Uh, you know, I remember in my elementary economic, uh, you know, cl economics uh, class. Now, uh, we were told that uh, uh, as an economist, as a prospective uh, industrialist, you have to know what to produce, yes. when to produce, who to produce, and where to produce. Yes. In other words, you have to know who needs what, yes. when does she need it, mm -hmm. where does she need it, and how does she need it. Now, you make good shoes. Yes. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Now, you tell me. Uh, what are the challenge that, uh, you know, the constraints that uh, people can have uh, when it comes to uh, manufacturing industry? Because a lot of people want to go into this. Things. Apart from what uh, uh, Mr. Henry said, yes. uh, what do you think are the challenges that people can readily handle on their own? Yes, um, a holistic approach, look at the propensity of your endowment, who tells you the challenge you are going to face at the long run of operating business. Now, in business production process, we have both the short run period and the long run period. The short run period being uh, where uh, factors of production are relatively fixed. Mm. You understand, you know, you cannot uh, make some adjustment, so to speak, you know, for you to know what to do at the right time. But when the time is not giving you to operate, you now know that you need to put every factor of production in place. Yeah. You know, you are no more under stress of a time band of when you are need, you need to deliver the products that you are required to do. So the endowment, you know, that you are made of, the resources around you, you know, whether it be land, capital, uh, labor, or the skill, the, the skill you need 
to put the uh, 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 the staffs together, you know, will now determine how long you are going to operate in that business. Mm. This is by way of saying, okay, if you take a look at the textile industry, now in the Nigeria, at the time we used to produce uh, uh, the clothes we put on and all that, we are told now that those industries are no more running. Even in the leather works industry, from the animals, boundary, you know, you know the challenge you face when you are rearing cattle and all of that, even to the ternary uh, process where you refine the leather and onward to production process. So you now know where to get your raw materials, when to get it, and for how much, then put into production process, and what you derive at the end of the day by way of margin for the sustenance. Uh, sustainability of the business. Mm. So if you understand, uh, have a good knowledge of all these things put together, you now know how you are able to run, you know, to sustain when there are challenges. You know, my brother said just now that you may see somebody doing well in a business. does not mean that you are going to do well if you do not have the full knowledge that, you know, that business entails. So what is uh, important you know, from the onset, must be the right information you gather, you know, where to get your raw materials, which is key. Because without your raw material, without the input, you know, there will be no production process, there will be no output. What is required now is your output, your, your impact in the society, mm. what people get uh, uh, derives from you as a way of product or service that you render that will keep you in the business. You may be doing good work. If your product is having no impact in the society. It will face you out of business. Mm. You understand? But the impact you make of your product, that your product make, or the service that you render, what it collects in the society. That is why your, theory, your theoretical work in the university, your research publication will be useless if it does not solve a problem in the society. But first, look at the industry that you are going to play, play in. Mm. You understand? The, the way and where you get your raw materials, whether you are going to import them or they are going to be locally sourced, you know, then the production process, what you need to put in, you know, uh, solving the power supply that my brother talked about just now, you know, then your staffing, you know. Even in uh, business management, we talk about SWOT analysis, you know, strength, weakness, opportunity threat. Mm. Strength we're not talking about the short run, opportunity threat talking about the long run, mm. you know, where you are able to, you know, vary all your factors of production. You know, if you are not an economist, you will not know what to do, but it doesn't take much knowledge to say you must be a graduate for you to get this knowledge uh, of uh, knowing what to produce, when and how to produce. But know what impact is your product having in the society or the service you render what is he solving? That is what is going to keep you in business okay. you know, for you to make a uh, headway. All right, beautiful. Now, uh, viewers out there, the program is still this morning on ITV, and uh, we are looking at investment opportunities in Nigeria. As uh, the year starts, uh, it is uh, time you begin to look inward as a person, as an individual, as a group of persons, and uh, perhaps, it's, uh, perhaps it's also time for us as a nation to begin to look inwards. Now, we have mentioned uh, that uh, there are various aspects of the economy that you can invest into. You've got uh, the agriculture, uh, you've got uh, uh, industry, production, manufacturing, and of course, uh, you also have oil and gas, mining is there. Uh, stock, fixed deposits, uh, transportation, and uh, haulage services that has to do with uh, logistics. Now, uh, Mr. Manchu, uh, Mr. Henry, uh, you, uh, like what I said, I said I, I don't want to describe you as a small-scale uh, enterprise owner anymore because I know you have grown beyond that. But let's look at, um, you know, some of the teaching problems that small-scale enterprise uh, owners do have, uh, you know, that has to do with... Uh, uh, resources, numerous. Uh, resources, you yes, know, uh, manufacturing resources, because uh, like you are into production of pure water, table water. The other time we understand that you guys increased your price and all that. Well, facts find it reveal that because your resources are not there. Not that this, uh, we don't have these resources here, the things that you produce with, but oftentimes we discover that you guys uh, go elsewhere to import them. So what is it that, what do you think is, is the issue? What are the issues as it relates to uh, manufacturing resources that we cannot have here? Okay, first of all, what keeps a company running or a business running is fund. 
And many a time, most of us, we rely on goodwill from family members. Because mm. when you want to assess facility from the bank, it will be easier for the head of a can, came to pass through the alpha needle in this part of the world. Those who have ideas, those who have things to offer, those who have idea to solve problems, but they don't have the way with that to assess the bank facilities. But perhaps it's almost the same thing anywhere. You've got to show some collateral, so it's not yeah, and yeah, how many of us okay, how many of us can actually get the type of collateral that the that the banks, the creditors will ask for? How many of us have facilities that are covered by C of O? You may have as many properties as you can, but if it's not covered by a C of O, you cannot use it as a collateral. And some of us, when you are asking for guarantors, because of our attitude here, trust, there's no trust. Because mm. many people have betrayed trust that have been reposed on people. Because of that, even when the genuine one comes, you would not want to actually extend the hand of friendship to such a one. Mm. Then you talked about why things, price of things go up. Mm. It is logical that you have to sell the way you bought. Mm. You have to sell factory in your cost of production, your cost of, your cost of distribution, mm. then have your return on investment until and unless that is done. There is nobody who ever opens a business and want to wind up tomorrow. There are most of these big names, most of these big beverages you hear today, right? They started from the scratch and they handed it over to, it takes about the fourth or the fifth generation and that they run such companies. Why? Yeah, because the company was, it was survived survived and handed over and handed over mm. and handed over that's to say that every business that you open is supposed to outlive you yes. every business is supposed to outlive you i am praying that my business will outlive me i will die and i will leave it behind but find out men in my industry for instance mm. many have wound up why did they wind up because they couldn't recover their cost of production that what led to our having it wasn't as if we actually if we were to properly price our product it would have gone beyond. We are subsidizing our product as of today. And that is the truth. We are subsidizing it. If you want to put in your cost of production, for example, you generate your power, diesel as of today, at 360 naira per liter. You don't have power to power, you run on that. You will still use the same petrol at 165 to take it to the the post of the person that but wants don't to buy you think you? there are cheaper ways uh, to do these things a while ago you talked about uh, alternate uh, source of power yeah the alternate uh, source of power here is for us to have generator because as a matter of fact in this part of in this part of the country public power is an alternate because mm. your main source of power is your own generator yeah, but there, there's providing. alternate uh, source of power yeah, the to alter, generator yes, now. even, the, you, even you, the alternate power you are talking about is that going to solar going to solar for you to have the solar that will power such uh, the types of facility. equipment and the facility you have in your facility, then you need, to, you need to approach the bank again. And the bank is not there to facilitate such, a, such investment. Mm. So that's the way we are problem. It's go to our roads. Our roads, they're in the worst state. You buy your... Yesterday, I had to change my uh, U-boat in one of my vehicles. Right? The U-boat that we used to buy for 2000, 2005, as at yesterday, you put this 5,000 here. And because the roads are bad, and this vehicle had to be well loaded, as they maneuver the potholes, the next you hear, you just hear a breakage. All these are factored into your production. Mm. If the roads were good, the roads were good, then we we'll spend less on maintenance of vehicle. As of today, Evans, I know you own a car. Mm. Engine oil, a tin of engine oil, four liters. I know these people, they are smart. They are gradually facing now four liters. I don't know whether you know now. Yeah, so yeah. it's now five liters. Five so you liters. have to go and buy five liters yeah. at almost 12,000 naira. Mm. And that you have to do every month. Every month you have to do that. Not necessarily. It depends. Yeah, no, no, I, yeah, I, may, no. I may not service my car every month. Yes, yeah, because you don't use your vehicle. For me, my vehicle is always on the road. Those of us that are into distribution, our vehicle is always on the road two for seven. So for you to have that engine, for you to increase the lifespan or to maintain the lifespan of that vehicle, you must service. In my place, we serve it every month. Every month. For you to give a good lifespan for your vehicle. Mm. So when you factor in all this, in the raw material that we use, as at this time last year, we're buying a ton. 
for 750,000 naira. As of today, let me just say, as of December, because we have not gone to market today now. As of last market we made in December, we are buying a ton of that amount for 1,420,000 naira. Have I increased my product with that margin? The product of my water has not increased by that margin. The packaging bag we used to buy for 4,700. That packaging bag today, for the one that was worth 4,500, is 7,500 today. Have I increased my product by that margin? Anyway. That's why I said that our product is subsidized. We are mm. telling the public that mm. the water industry, we are subsidizing mm. the product we are supplying the country. All right. So maybe very soon populace. you guys will call the federal government to remove subsidy too from. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, we are really not here to lament the situation uh, yes. so that we don't scare. But we are believing that this uh, will We don't better. scare would be uh, yeah, yeah. investors uh, away because. Uh, uh, it is the only uh, way that Nigeria can go now. Let's begin to look at alternate ways of generating income because there are youngsters out there uh, that uh, maybe last year they've gone through one training or the other. So they made up their mind that come January this year they are going to start uh, making something. So let us not try to. No, scare what I'm them. trying to say, yeah, what I'm trying to yeah, say yeah. here, that don't just don't just double into any business because you have seen another person there. Mm. Seek knowledge, like my brother said. Mm the requisite knowledge that you need to acquire. Mm. Ask the necessary question mm. for you to invest. Mm. Otherwise, you may just be investing in an industry that you're not going to have your money back. Okay. All right, uh, Matthew, you've yes. been uh, in uh, the making of shoes uh, you know, uh, industry uh, for quite some time now. Yes. Uh, so you tell us, uh, what are those, uh, those things that you've been doing that has uh, always made you to succeed? Yes. Uh, so that that person viewing you this morning uh, can be encouraged that if Matthew, despite all these um, you know, situations where challenges yes. and all that, if Matthew has uh, succeeded, succeeded, I can also succeed too. Yes, you see, when my brother was analyzing the huge capital investment involved in table water, I begin to feel happy the more with the industry I find myself, you know, uh, from the small scale, you can do plow back. You mm. don't need those massive uh, 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 capital, capital, you know, for which you need to start. Even uh, in the comfort of your one room apartment, mm. you know, get the advances that you need, you know, the material, you know, even less than uh, a thousand naira, you can start, you know, operating in the leather works. In, the, in fact, just last year here, the federal government has told us that in the next uh, uh, two to three years, that is by year 2025, mm. the leather work industry has uh, intermitted to project uh, generate uh, over one billion dollars. Mm. You know, and even from the standpoint that is generating uh, over 500 uh, million dollars as we as it is as it is you know from the small scale because everybody must use their shoe mm. whether you like it or not even in the and everybody must industry, repair repair his or shoe too shoe. Yeah. and with what is obtainable now with the mass uh, production that is going on people are not detailed about uh, uh, little stages so you know with the skill acquisition that you you have you know at this level you you put yourself down you'll be able to deliver what that uh, uh, consumer uh, uh, is in need of. Rather than waiting for imported shoes, you can get raw materials you put into your uh, into production process, and at the end of the day, you bring out a fantastic product that are eaten to you, we think that they were imported. So with that projection, it's telling you now, the federal government is telling you now that there is massive investment opportunity in the leather works industry. And it, as it stands now, over 750,000 people in Nigeria now has been you know, engaged directly and indirectly in the leather works industry. So with the little resource at your disposal, you can you know, start from small scale. We are looking at small scale uh, uh, businesses from micro, small and medium enterprise development. We can start from somewhere, you know, start from basic repairs, then making of pants slippers, you know, that you will use rather than looking to other countries to produce for you. You can put them to work. We have uh, we are resources as to animals, boundary, you know, the tiny industry, though it's not up to standard as it, as it is now, mm -hmm. but with patience and, uh, you know, in the industry, you can bring them to standard. And that is what has been keeping us in business because 
people must wear shoes. And not just wear shoes, wear durable shoes. Mm. You know, that is how it has been. And uh, uh, let me give uh, uh, praise to NUC, that's Nigeria <coughs> University Commission, for making entrepreneurship compulsory now. You know, in the university. Yeah, but, but you have to be mindful with the way you say that because for most people, <laughs> entrepreneurship in tertiary institutions is more of theoretical. Uh, that's but that's with, the way it's, 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 uh, That seems to be an issue too. Yes, with, with what I'm doing, because I consult for both private and uh, public uh, universities, even polytechnics, mm. we are bringing practicals to it now. You know, we make the students produce their own leather product for for assessment. Uh, do, you, do, you do, to, do you do that at a that proficiency is, yeah, stage? Yes, do you do that? No, the the question I'm asking, uh, Matthew, yes. uh, because I went to the university, I know I did a little bit of entrepreneurship. It yes. was more or less like a paperwork. Theory, yes. You just answer the questions, you write and all that. It, I never saw the practicals and you all see, that. Even with so, the tag I'm wearing now, yeah. and uh, with what I'm doing presently, I'm telling you, I'm engaging a university, public universities, private universities, even polytechnics in these states now, as it stands now. We are doing this practical work. We make the student, even with what I'm doing now with one of the big private universities. Uh, yeah, we understand you, you do that with yes. the University. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm. Over 70 students, 70 students, they are made to produce these things. And with the engravement of the, uh, if I can say that, of your the, the product, the University, University of Kada, yeah. inscribed on the product. What is the level of response? Yes, of people, you need to do it because that is the assessment for you to pass that course. And that is why I'm giving the credit to NUC, that without that apprenticeship course, you cannot graduate. Mm. If you pass it over, if you carry it over, you must come the next year to to, to, to sit for it, not just a, a theoretical work now, because Project. in their 200 level, they've done the theory. Now, in their penultimate uh, year, they must be exposed to the practice. It is called hand-on skill, mm. entrepreneurship skill. Mm. You understand? So, students are made to do this. There are different schools to that effect. I am handling the leatherworks uh, department with the Benedictine University. There are school of uh, animals boundary, you know, that is even directly related to getting hand and skin mm. in the tanning industry. There are school of block molding, uh, catering, so on and so forth. So Benedictine University is doing well. Other schools are taking care of it to bring practical approach to uh, uh, hand-on skill. Call it hand-on skill, entrepreneurship skill. You know, for people to do because without the practical assessment of your finished product, not not paperwork, not research work, no, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the finished product, what you made mm. at the end of the day, whether you now choose to continue with it or not, but you do it for you to pass this course. Okay, you know. Uh, all right, uh, let's uh, shift our attention now to government uh, because uh, in some of these things that we talked about, government uh, has a role. Uh, in Edo State here, we've got uh, the Edo State Production Hall, and uh, we understand that uh, the Edo State government is also not resting in its oars, uh, making sure that uh, youths in the states get themselves busy uh, so that uh, they don't waste their time. But the situation seems to uh, be a mirage, a mirage in the sense that uh, uh, we really don't understand what was going on. Uh, from your point of view, Mr. Henry, what do you think is happening? Is it that government is not doing enough to actually attract youths, you know, to opportunities, investment opportunities, capacity building opportunities, or that the youths themselves are not availing themselves uh, to what government is doing? What do you think is the issue? Two, go both way. One, government is not creating enough awareness enough awareness let people know that there's a place where they can acquire this knowledge and two at this early stage for government to achieve the set of goals they can make it almost next to nothing mm. we are talking about subsidy it is this area we should be talking about subsidy go to that place acquire this knowledge without paying a dime acquire it free of charge when government does that then see people will be encouraged to go in and learn. Then two, uh, most of our youths, they find they actually want it uh, the fast way. They want to take the fast lane. Many of our youths go to most companies today. You will see vacancy, 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 vacancy. <laughs> you are looking for this category Nobody of workers. Want work. Nobody wants to come. You are looking for drivers, which are in our industry. You are looking for somebody to come. Nobody, we just want it the easy Maybe way. the remuneration, the wage is small. No, 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 certainly so. not. Because 
for you to know whether the wage is big or not, you first of all have to apply. Mm. You first of all have to come to the place and say, okay, uh, I'm interested in XYZ job. Then what is the numeration like? So when you have not come, you, there's no way you can determine what but, but, yeah, is. Mr. Henry, but, but recent finding has shown that uh, the reason why production uh, is really not high in Nigeria is because uh, that Nigeria probably pays uh, the lowest wage. Uh, now, this, these youths we are talking about now, they, 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 they leave, they finger. go outside the country. They are in Canada, they are in Europe, they are in the United States of America, and some of these things that they cannot do here, they do it out there. Because why? Because the wage that they get for these things is small. Uh, no, so, not the wage per se. Mm. The way they get there, the way higher. they get there, yeah. right? The you know, way you call it higher, by the time you convert it to a naira, yes. it becomes very big. Mm. But the way they get there, when they get their wage there, they will pay for all the necessary things they need to pay for. And they will get value for, for all it. of them. Mm. The standard of living. You understand? Mm. You pay your taxes, you pay your dues, you pay your levy, then you will get value for all of such payments. But same cannot be said over here. Yes. And two, no man we are no reasonable investor we want to so underpay his worker you see the this edible one mm. they sell on the traffic mm -hmm. i always tell my workers they don't fry it with granite oil or with vegetable oil that edible one mm. you see i guess you know edible yeah one. i do they put the edible one on a pot the edible one will produce the oil with which it will fry itself, itself. So any business, I tell people, any money investor that goes out of his business to source money elsewhere to run the business, to pay the wage bill, that business is already done. Mm. So every money you will spend in your investment must be generated from that your investment. So if the business is doing well, why would not pay? Why will you not pay well? Mm. So if the business is not doing well, go and find out now what workers were paid before the price adjustment with just slight adjustment of the price it's not what they are paid today because more a little has mm -hmm. come into the business yeah. now so you cannot pay the worker more than you were paying them before mm. because when you put the card on the table in my place i put on the table look at what has come in this month just tell me how do we run this business if you want to go the way you want us to go and they understand but now that the things have changed a little bit when we call it come back and look at it things are fairer now then we can now meet some of our needs. Okay. Maybe not the way you want it, mm. but at least it can be better. Okay, on, on the issue of government, so the government's role in trying yes, I'm to... Saying, yeah, government, yeah. I said that, one, they have to give enough encouragement. Okay. Encouragement, acquire this key as almost all you need to do, just pay your transport there. And you acquire it. If you acquire it, people now get to know. Let government do that for the first three, four, five years. Not looking at what they will get back. If they can subsidize for it, like they have said, mm. then why cannot why can't they subsidize the skill that they want to because when you are engaging them, you are taking them off the street. They said the idle man is the devil's, devil's workshop. Also. So if you take them off the street and engage them productively, they'll be able to they will be able to solve some problems mm. in the society. Mm -hmm. Like my brother said, that's what economy says. Mm. That you don't go in before you go into it, then you find out what is the need in the society, what is the problem in the society. You need to solve that problem. That way you come in. If the problem is already solved by as many people as possible, then there's no need going to that business because you already have more than enough solution to that problem. Mm. Look, explore, and find an area that, that they have needs. Okay. Then be ready to provide those needs. Uh, all right, as we wrap up now, uh, the came at you. Yes, yeah. uh, let me also add to what my brother has said, talking about uh, the role of government in all of this. Uh, what I would tell the government is that they should not politicize the process. Okay. You know, they should allow the skillful people in the industry handle, drive the system. Mm. Not by way of uh, using it to uh, uh, compensate those that help win the uh, mm. election and so on, mm. and thereby killing the, uh, ruining the economic process. You know, because also think of the business or the policy that we have leave you in government but don't you also think that perhaps uh, the government is not even aware <laughs> of what some See, of these manufacturers are doing uh, that how is many times uh, that yeah. is where publicity should come you should, you need to know the people that are doing well in certain industry what is making them do well ask them question if they may not be your party 
because this is not a party issue now to drive an economy. It's not because uh, it's PDP, just like when uh, the last uh, uh, administration, we probably are asking, uh, uh, let Okonje Iwola, let him uh, play this administration, whether it was in PDP there and so on, because of the scale, the S party, you understand? So give it, allow uh, professionals in the industry, give them the enabling environment, whether they are in your party or not, let them play. You know, I tell people, uh, the brain greater than most developed countries as to shoemaking is here. Mm. The brain behind a shoemaking director is here. Look at Nigeria. We are told now that Nigeria is a uh, world uh, 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 poverty capital of the world. It is this same Nigeria that has the director general, World Trade Organization, and the president of World Doctors. You understand? So let us amass our human capital, our natural resources of our endowment, what God has embellished us with, put them to production process. Nigeria is supposed to be one of the greatest nations in the whole world mm. of our natural endowment, economic endowment. In fact, look at it. Let us put to production process our uh, resources, and you see what will be turning out. We will not have balance of payment. They will not be deep, uh, dependent. You know, depending on uh, what comes from other country, we have the manpower. Let government give us an enabling environment. Let them not politicize it because one administration will come and go. The economy remains. Yeah. What you make out of it is important. What you make out of it is your identity to the world. Mm. Let us project good image of this nation. You see, we'll get there. Maybe finally, yeah. yes. if our economy must grow, mm. our industry must grow, we need both Nigerians and government to help drive it. Yes. There's one problem I discover we have. We are so, we believe in foreign things too much. We believe in foreign things, foreign shoes, foreign jacket, foreign, everything foreign, we don't want to buy Nigeria. And our leaders, they are not helping. There's a country, there's a company in this country that assembles and manufactures vehicle, right? Mm. If government was to lead by example, should patronize. They should patronize such company. Yeah. Get all our official vehicles from that company. Exactly. Then it we, they, we, we, they will cut at that. We will not need to spend our hard-earned currency on, uh, importation, on of importation cars. of cars. Yes. If government makes it a policy that all government-driven vehicles must be bought from this company, then the one that are below cannot take a queue. But when they suggested, they say no. Even members of national assembly, they kick against it that you they see, don't want such they don't want such a bank. You see, and at the end of the day, Leading that by will example. bring balance of payment deficit. Mm. You'll be indebted to other nation. You know, look at the debt profile, both locally, internationally, yes, it's growing because we're important, because we're, we're you are important independent. You we're know, important but the time you use, look at what we turn out from even with the basic tool. These are not subscated to at as the word, but look at product that comes from, from, from shoemaking directory. It, it we even sell abroad, but at low production rate. But if we get the enabling environment, we will be able to run Europe countries down in leather works. All right, gentlemen. Yes. Now, to actually understand some of these things that uh, we are talking about, if you have um, uh, a packet of match box, a packet of matches, that's a match box, you take it and uh, check it where it's made. Mm. is made in china mm. and of course if you've got um, a packet of toothpick uh, you check it and see where it's made is made in china now for the toothpick uh the 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 sticks that they use in making this toothpick they yeah. are in my village yeah, no they're in my village yeah. better sticks in my village so the point i'm trying to make here or that we're trying to make here this morning is that you can actually turn some of these things into uh, money that's what we are saying i mean you can make your toothpick yourself yeah. you can carve sticks into toothpicks and package them in such a way that people will patronize you. That way government needs to come in again. We are talking about technology. Techno most of these are technology driven. If government helps in the area of making available mm. this type of machines, mm. the equipment that are used to produce, the problem we have here is finishing. Finishing. I have seen issues. I have seen other shoes. But well, you will see very fine. But the time you look at the finishing, oh, the problem we're having is the finishing. Mm. But there's a technology that will help to make the finishing very fine. Go to where they do fabrication. Where you see we can fabricate anything that we need to fabricate. But the problem we have is, is finishing. The finishing. Yeah. So if government helps 
to make the technology available for us to have that finishing. Like he said, we can compete favorably mm. with any material that is coming in any part of the world. Yes. We have the way with that. Brain. The brain is there, the technology is there, the drive is there, yeah. but with the finishing is one of the problems we have. All right, gentlemen, I think uh, government uh, is listening and uh, yes. so that uh, uh, we can actually know where the issues are, where the problems are. Uh, we can actually uh, do things to make uh, Nigeria a better one. I really want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Henry Ariel Mokai, uh, the Managing Director, CEO at Dima Food and Beverages. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for finding time. To Always my and also, Deken Matthew Ahirobo, Ambassador of Nigeria Economic uh, Sustainability Plan, representing South South, uh, Mahio Shoemaking Director. Deken Matthew, thank you I so much for finding you. time yeah, uh, to come on the show today. Yeah. The program is still live and direct from from independent television here in Benin City. Uh, you stay tuned.